Apollo missions hauled back moon rocks that cracked open solar system secrets. Humanity's ultimate space victory. People flew a half a million miles round trip to the moon and back and survived and then managed to bring all these amazing rocks back that have taught us about the entire solar system. But Apollo 10. One, zero, all engines running. Engines roared perfectly. Orbit locked in, landing gear primed. NASA aborted at the last second, burying a chilling secret in lunar shadows that's barred our return for over 50 years. What terrifying find stopped them cold? Let's explore. In the early 1960s, the United States had big plans. They were preparing to send humans to the moon. The moon landing goal was widely publicized when President John F. Kennedy spoke to Congress on May 25th. In his speech, he declared that America should commit to landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth before the end of the decade. Just weeks before Kennedy's speech, the Soviet Union stole the spotlight by launching Yuri Gagarin into space aboard a spacecraft. He completed a single orbit around Earth and landed safely, becoming the first human in space. America was eager to catch up, viewing the moon landing as a chance to lead in the global space race. Nearly eight years after Kennedy's speech, the first crewed Apollo mission, Apollo 7, launched into Earth orbit in October 1968, marking the next chapter in the quest for lunar glory. On January 27, 1967, at Cape Kennedy, now Cape Canaveral, in Florida, a routine test rehearsal turned into a tragic disaster for Apollo 1. What was meant to be a harmless countdown simulation for astronauts Gus Grissom, Edward H. White, and Roger Chaffee became deadly when a fire erupted inside the spacecraft. The hatch could not open quickly enough due to design issues, and the astronauts tragically perished in the blaze before their mission could begin. The nation mourned the loss, but NASA pressed forward with safety improvements toward the goal of landing on the moon. About 21 months later, Apollo 7 successfully launched into Earth orbit on October 11, 1968, marking the program's return to crewed flight and a key step in humanity's quest for the stars. Apollo 7 proved humanity's quest for the moon couldn't be stopped. Does that fire you up for future missions? Comment and chat with me. But as NASA rebuilt from ashes, Apollo 8 dared to circle the moon's hidden far side. What shocking secrets did the crew uncover that changed everything? In December 1968, as the Apollo program pushed toward a moon landing, the Apollo 8 crew captured global attention. They became the first humans to see the far side of the moon up close, not just routine exploration, but a historic voyage around the body that had long hidden half its surface from Earth. Apollo 8 wasn't about paranormal mysteries, but it felt like a lunar detective story. Astronauts Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders orbited the moon 10 times, photographing its rugged far side, full of craters and mountains, just as scientists predicted. No telescopes from Earth could reveal it fully, fueling decades of curiosity. When President Kennedy's challenge spurred NASA to accelerate, they pondered the risks. The crew reported nothing unusual, giving the moon a green light as safe for future missions. This was humanity's farthest journey from Earth yet, a flawless orbital success that paved the way for Apollo 11's landing. That same month, the Apollo 9 crew tried something interesting. They practiced docking and undocking the command module and lunar module while orbiting Earth. Apollo 10 repeated this process in lunar orbit, but skip the actual landing. If you want to see what Apollo astronaut Charles Duke admitted before his death, I've also added a direct link to it in the pinned comment below this video. And don't forget to come back, the next discovery is about the great leap of Apollo 11. On the bright sunny morning of July 16, 1969, something truly incredible happened. The Apollo 11 mission launched from Kennedy Space Center carrying astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. After about 76 hours in space, Apollo 11 entered lunar orbit on July 19. At Houston's control center, 
Activity peaked as the Lunar Module Eagle, with Armstrong and Aldrin, separated from the Command Module, where Collins remained in orbit. Hours later, on July 20, the Eagle landed gently in the Sea of Tranquility. Armstrong radioed, the Eagle has landed. Then, at 10.56 p.m. E ETT, as he stepped onto the surface, he declared the famous words, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. In less than 20 minutes, Aldrin followed, becoming the second human on the moon. No strange sightings were reported, just a historic triumph. What happened next became legend. Six more Apollo missions launched, five of which landed perfectly on the lunar surface. Apollo 13 suffered a setback when, shortly after launch, an oxygen tank exploded in the service module. This led to a tense rescue mission as they had to quickly return to Earth, missing the opportunity to leave their own mark on the moon. In December 1972, Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt closed the lunar chapter, becoming the last people to set foot on the moon. And because no one had set foot on the moon for over half a century, strangely, NASA never felt the moon's gravitational pull drawing them back. And so, the moon remained undisturbed, waiting for the next person to make that giant leap once again. Beyond the lunar missions, there was a vast, unexplored expanse of space awaiting human curiosity. The pioneers weren't astronauts, but robotic explorers like Pioneer, Mariner, and Voyager. They ventured to the far corners of the solar system, uncovering the secrets of celestial bodies that had remained mysteries until then. The moon, once the star of the program, had lost its luster. Human interest waned, and the Apollo 17 landing, once a spectacular sight for millions, became a quiet event witnessed by a select few, while the world held its breath during the Apollo 11 landing. Okay, let's go. Capcom's there. Okay, all flight controllers are moving around, preparing to decouple. Okay, back off. Fail forward, guys. Subsequent missions struggled to garner the same level of attention. Whispers among experts suggested that NASA, after the stressful ordeal of Apollo 13, was being cautious. The fear of losing potential astronauts permeated every Apollo mission. It seemed the space agency, having pushed its limits, didn't want to take risks forever. The era of lunar exploration was fading, giving way to the allure of more distant places. Tap the like button to let us know this content is making a difference. And if you're watching on your phone, be sure to press the hype button right below. Every hype helps this video get published to more people and it truly supports me in earning extra income. I promise to keep bringing you even more great content. Apollo's lunar legend faded into whispers after Apollo 13's explosion and Apollo 17's quiet finale, but what secret government plan did Nixon hide in case Armstrong's giant leap turned into cosmic catastrophe? In the mysterious space frontiers, the US government finally revealed classified details years after Apollo 11's moonwalk. In this clip, we catch a glimpse of Richard Nixon, who had prepared a contingency speech in case the mission failed. He reflected, I want to tell television viewers that this is a historic moment, but throughout my political career, I have never benefited from not paying my respects to the trio of astronauts, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. Nixon offered praise for these space pioneers emphasizing their bravery and the risks they took for the nation. Hold on tight, because the Apollo program had intense safety protocols. NASA and mission leaders prepared for every scenario, including emergencies, but the focus was always on bringing the astronauts home safely. On January 5, 1972, President Nixon delivered a message signaling the end of the Apollo era. No more moon landings after Apollo 17. The program had encountered a major setback because the government cut funding sharply. Moon missions in the 1960s were enormously expensive and NASA's budget was slashed amid shifting priorities. The entire program, from 1961 to 1972, cost over $25 billion, which equates to more than $150 billion in today's dollars, making it one of the government's most expensive projects ever. After more than a decade of pouring money into NASA's moon landings, public and political interest faded. Taxpayers and politicians grew reluctant to fund further extravagant missions. 
NASA's grand plan for a permanent lunar base was rejected due to a lack of funding and approval. Instead of setting up camp on the moon, NASA paused lunar efforts and redirected resources to less costly space missions, like the Space Shuttle program, under the new budget constraints. Those at NASA were very worried. What would happen if the brave astronauts venturing into the mysterious land encountered cardiovascular problems due to the unusual gravity on the moon's rugged surface? It wasn't just impact craters affecting gravity. There were other concerns from space as well. The main headache in NASA's mind was what would happen if humans lived in a low-gravity environment and absorbed additional radiation for an extended period. During the Apollo missions, our space explorers only experienced life on the moon for about three days, like a short weekend getaway in space. No one could predict how living on the moon for months or even years would affect humans. The astronauts set up camp on the lunar surface, thinking they were having a vacation in space. What if the lack of gravity and excessive radiation were like a health ninja, silently attacking them over time? NASA sees this as isolating the crew on a planet with serious threats to their health and safety. NASA isn't thrilled about turning the moon into a second home, the risks and mysteries are like a cosmic puzzle they're not ready to solve. The Apollo missions showed we could visit the moon for a short trip, but making it a truly habitable place for humans is a completely different matter. It's like trying to figure out how to keep humans alive in a place that essentially says, no, this place isn't hospitable. The challenges are enormous, health issues, technical difficulties, and all sorts of other unknowns that need to be addressed. NASA wants to be more certain before permanently sending humans to the moon. Long lunar missions seemed too risky without testing them with automated probes. Sadly, there wasn't enough funding for the research needed after the Apollo missions. This made the dream of establishing a human colony on the moon even more difficult. Lunar conditions are no joke. Extreme temperatures, the lack of an atmosphere, and the constant threat of micrometeorites make everything extremely risky. Any building or dwelling on the lunar surface is always in danger. There's always the fear of things breaking or being damaged, which could be life-threatening. And worse, there aren't many backup options in case of an emergency. Living on the moon is not just a scientific problem, but also presents countless other challenges. Understanding the engineering issues involved in building homes on the moon is a huge undertaking. We had to figure out how to make the shelters sturdy enough to withstand the lunar weather. And as if that weren't enough, we also had to create intelligent life support systems. Those systems had to be like a friend on the surface of our moon, keeping humans alive and healthy. But that wasn't the end of the difficulties. We needed essentials like oxygen, water, and fuel. Without them, a home on the moon was just a pretty box. Finding these essentials was like treasure hunting on the moon, and we had to find them to keep the lunar base running. Then there was the headache of how to get humans to the moon and back. It wasn't just about a fun rocket flight. We had to transport large things into lunar orbit to establish a base on the moon. The problem was that we didn't have rockets powerful enough for this job. After successfully landing astronauts on the moon in 1972, NASA faced a daunting challenge. The persistent lack of political support had left the space agency in a deadlock. Previously, the entire human space travel culture was like a rocket propelled by President Kennedy's ambitious goal of touching the surface of the moon. In 1970, this goal had held the nation's suspense for over a decade. But once NASA completed the moon landing, things descended into chaos. The agency found itself adrift with no clear direction or purpose in space. The harsh reality was overwhelming, but budget constraints and the need to adapt to new missions dictated by lawmakers and those in the White House were also present. Like the Apollo program, the golden child of space exploration, which had completed its epic saga, NASA was now struggling to find its next installment. There was no national cheerleader to rally forces for further lunar adventures or to build upon the legacy of Apollo. The shift from focusing on the moon to discovering the next big thing was a critical moment for NASA, just as they needed a new mission control center to lead them through the vast space possibilities ahead. The agency had to change its plans as the political focus of manned spaceflight shifted from the moon to low Earth orbit. This move disappointed some, particularly those who advocated for a lunar colony. However, NASA had to adapt to this new reality. At the same time, space exploration enthusiasts began proposing different goals, such as creating reusable space vehicles. Instead of simply doing the same old things, 
NASA leaders decided to reinvent themselves by embracing new challenges and seeking new opportunities to drive development. The shift away from the moon was not a random choice, but was influenced by changes in the American public's desire for space exploration. Following the excitement of the Apollo moon landings, enthusiasm for building a lunar settlement began to wane as public interest waned. Gaining consistent support for other lunar projects became increasingly difficult. Nixon and his team truly made significant changes at NASA. They didn't just sit idly by, they fostered teamwork in space missions, as if they were always ready to collaborate with other nations. The Apollo-Soyuz test project, where Americans and the Soviets collaborated, was more than just a friendly handshake, it involved sharing resources and expertise. This team-based approach not only brought nations closer together, but also enhanced space knowledge and skills, taking space exploration to a new level. The year 2000 arrived, and NASA's budget increased thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope, reaching over $20 billion annually. Yet priorities remained focused elsewhere. Americans remain among NASA's most enthusiastic supporters, proud of U.S. leadership in space. NASA is now preparing for a return to the moon through the Artemis program, which gained momentum after private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin emerged around 2017, revitalizing lunar ambitions. NASA accelerated Artemis planning amid growing commercial interest in lunar missions. Fast forward to late 2020, Artemis 1 launched successfully in November 2022 as an uncrewed test flight. Artemis 2, a crewed lunar flyby, is targeted for no earlier than September 2025, with international partners involved. Future missions will pave the way for landings. The Moon, a celestial mystery, continues to beckon explorers. Recent research from lunar orbiters has revealed a dynamic world, challenging older views of a barren surface. Evidence suggests an active core, moonquakes, massive water ice deposits, and unique geological formations, hinting at a complex history possibly from a giant impact event. These discoveries fuel excitement for Artemis astronauts, who will conduct extended stays in habitable modules, potentially including experiments with greenhouses for lunar-grown food. Here's what we know for certain. Something changed NASA's approach to the moon after Apollo 11. The urgency disappeared. The willingness to take risks evaporated. The long-term planning for lunar colonization was completely abandoned. And for 50 years, despite having the capability, desire, and resources, nobody has gone back. We also know that astronauts who went there came back, changed. That multiple nations with space programs show the same reluctance to send humans. That classified programs exist surrounding lunar data. The anomalies documented on the moon are systematically downplayed or ignored. The official explanations for abandoning lunar exploration don't withstand scrutiny. So what's really up there? What did Apollo discover that made returning impossible? The answer might be simpler and more terrifying than elaborate conspiracy theories suggest. Perhaps the moon isn't empty. Perhaps we found evidence that someone else has been there, is still there, and made it clear that humanity's presence wasn't welcome for extended stays. Thank you for watching this deep dive into one of space exploration's greatest mysteries. What do you think is the real reason we abandoned the moon? Share your theories in the comments below. And if you found this investigation fascinating, make sure you're subscribed because next week, we're exploring another classified NASA program that suggests space agencies know far more about our solar system than they're telling us. The evidence I've uncovered will shock you. Until next time, keep questioning, keep searching for the truth, and remember, the biggest mysteries are often hidden in plain sight. Thanks for being with us. Leave a comment, like to show your support. And remember to hit that subscribe button for more exciting videos. See you next time.